after a two plus year wait, it has finally arrived. The Super 7 Ultimate Party Wagon. Inspired by the vintage line and updated to be cool, hip, and sleek, this bad boy is massive and commands a massive price point. Is it worth spending your hard-earned money on? Well, let's dive in and find out. Let's kick things off first by looking at the box. Some beautiful artwork all across the board from the front to the back, and it lets you know what you get inside. More fun on both sides of the box, as you can see right there. Very, very nice box. I'm probably not gonna cut up this box. And then there's the bottom for those who need that. Let's kick things off first by looking at the front of the van. We got a lot going on here, so let's dive in. Kicking things off, we're gonna go ahead and start with the bumper. The bumper looks cool. I do have a couple nitpicks. I thought that the bumper was gonna have sculpted teeth in there at the bottom, it doesn't. It's not the end of the world, but I wanted to point that out. The dry brushing I'm not the biggest fan of, but it's there. I get why they did it, adds a little flair. The lights do not light up, as you know, but the turtle logo in the middle does look very nice, very vibrant, it's done very well. And once again, there's those lights, but we knew this going in that it wouldn't have functioning LEDs. Moving on to the top of the van, we get to the windshield area, and as you can see, I have Michelangelo and Donatello inside, cruising for a bruise and looking to stomp some foot. One of the cool features about this van is that Volkswagen fill, and by that I mean the windows. Now, in case you didn't know, the windows will open up. And the way they do this is there's these little tabs on the side as you may or not may be able to see. And what happens is you flip them open like so, and there you go. I think it's a cool feature on the windshield. Uh, I like it. Be careful with the plastic. I don't have any problems now, but I did have a problem with it in the beginning, fresh out of the box. But a nice feature and a fun way to mess around with your van. Now, another cool feature is this blaster door on the front here with the antenna. It moves around no issue, and it just clips in with these like bolt type things on the side of the van. We'll talk about that more in a bit. We have the blasters here. They rotate, they look very much like the vintage version. They have some dry brushing on them. I don't particularly care for that. I would have preferred if they had more of a updated look to reflect the van, but it is what it is. Now the blaster door can come off and I thought I was gonna keep it off, but I decided not to. It, it, it doesn't look as good as I thought it would. But if you did wanna take it off, you certainly can. Looking at the door here as we move to the side of the van, it hinges out beautifully. It doesn't feel as weak as like the NECA one. It feels sturdy enough uh, and it claps in quite nice. There's little tabs there. But as we dive deeper into the interior, what you can see is it's, it's pretty big inside. The turtles almost seem too small for it, but I like the look of it. I like how the... The seat is torn up. It's got duct tape. It's got seat belts on it. Seat belts don't clasp around the figures. I don't know if that was always the plan. I thought that the seat belts may have been workable, but I guess they're not on this thing. The steering wheel. The steering wheel is nice, but it doesn't rotate. At least mine doesn't. I'm not sure. As more reviews come out, I think you'll be able to see if that's the case or not. Hopefully nobody breaks it. The gas pedals are cool with the brake and, you know, the shifting and all that stuff. Painted well, they don't press in or anything like that. The details inside the cockpit look good. I like it. I don't really have any complaints with it as far as I can tell. Um, all that came out really nice. I'm glad that they're not stickers or anything, so I can dig that. Moving on from there, let's talk about the wheels. The wheels have some cool features going on. They roll very smoothly and they have like pizza tire tread on them. But another cool feature that they have are these rot rotating pizza hub caps, uh, like spinners, if you will. I'm not a car guy, so bear with me here. They do spin around and you have no issues messing with those. I don't know if I'm gonna keep them on or not. Here's something that somebody pointed out to me. In the promo images, it looks like there's a plug for the uh, 
the tires if you don't have the lids on in this final form not the case but as you saw the pizza did spin around like so and you can take it off it takes a little prying but it can come off the side of the van this side of the van looks good I like how there's different levels of green going on and yellow. I like that there's plastic on the window that feels somewhat sturdy. And I say somewhat because I haven't really pushed it to the max or anything. Going on to the foot tenderizer, that's pretty cool. It's got some dry brushing too. Once again, not a fan of the color choice here. I get that it was inspired by the vintage line, but eh, it just kind of deters from the overall look. But the hinge does come out it does hold the figure i would say there's no spring on this one but i would just be careful with it as you don't want it to get messed up or anything and mikey just fastens up in there they're like a belt seat belt type thing and it has different clasps on it going back to the door here let's go ahead and get that opened up i'm going to show you guys what's inside of there because this is where it starts to get a little more interesting and by interesting i mean when we open up the foot tenderizer here we get the bombs that come out and those work pretty good more on those in a bit i just wanted to show that let's go ahead and open the top here and let's see what's inside in terms of exterior there's a lot of room here and this was one of my complaints about the NECA fan it felt very compact but in here as you're going to see further on there's a lot of room to do a lot of cool things with this. And I definitely appreciate that. So if you want to open it, you just open up the back and then you open up the sides. And look here, we got a little party going on. We got Slash, we got the Toxie, we got Michelangelo, Leonardo, I believe Raphael, or maybe that's Donatello. I think that's Donatello, my apologies. So you got that going on. And then if you wanted to know, you could fit six turtles inside. Now I took a combination of glow in the dark and regular turtles from Super 7, put them in there. If you wanted to mix and match and create a Super 7 party, you fit some Thundercats, a Slash, Toxie, a Foot, and Turtle in there. But as far as the interior of the van goes, this is kind of where it shines and where it's really cool. It's got the seats like we saw in the front, but some of these seats are even more messed up than what we saw previously. As you can see, this one has the duct tape. We have the boom box. Now the boom box is removable. It's a cool addition to the piece. I like that Super 7 included this. This is a lot of fun. You got the speaker there, both speakers, I should say. Uh, this came out really nice. Now, it's a little hard to get in and out. As you can see, I'm struggling with one hand here, but it does come out. Um, the only function that you have on it is the handle on the top, which can be a little tricky. So I'm gonna say be a bit careful with that. You don't wanna break it. You don't wanna get sad. I mean, you could always order the other Mikey. But I wanna be the same boom box, uh, which I think it's going to be. Uh, but a very nice piece, something that didn't need to be included to move out, but a little fun thing that Super 7 threw in there. So I'm a fan of that. Uh, there's a lot of detail here, not only in the seats, but up on the walls of the inside of the van. I do like that. Even the floor has got a nice paint and texture to it. Um, that feels good. It's sturdy. You can hold all the figures as you previously saw. We move on to the second seat. We got the video game console, the phone, a couple other things going on there. Those all came out nice. We go to the back of the van. We got slices of pizza. We got this back construction area. I do wish the compartments opened up on the back there. And then we go to this other side. We got some wiring, some other stuff going on. Another seat. Uh, and then we have, of course, uh, the gunner seat that comes out for the foot tenderizer. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then here's just a fun shot of various things going on inside the van. Like I said, this thing is very toyetic and has a fun feel to it. Um, as far as accessories go, let's go ahead and start with the owner's manual. You get the card and all this. This is a nice little thing. They didn't have to include it, but it's there. Uh, you get a keychain. Uh, so if you want that. And then you get some bumper stickers for if you want to be super cool and red. And then you have the stickers that you can place on the van. Now I want to let you know, I'm not putting any of these stickers on besides for the gas canisters those are the only two i'm putting on 
Um, some people have already said that the stickers are too small and you'll see that here in a little bit um, in certain spots or too big in other spots, but it's not for me. I like the van the way it is, so I'm going with that aesthetic. You get this amazing tool set, which is nice. You get all these different like helmets and you know the welder's mask, and then you get the canisters here, which look a little strange. And you know, I did end up putting the stickers on, and I did discover the stickers are a bit too short. I don't remember if that was the case in the old toy line, uh, but it's kind of disappointing here. They're like incomplete. Um, I don't know. That's just how I feel. Initial thoughts. So be aware of that. Another accessory I wanted to talk about is the Mauser that's ran over. It does have an articulated head. You can slide it under the tires and move it around and have fun. It's a neat thing to have. Moving to the back of the van. Yes, folks, the back of the van. Like an old Volkswagen, the engine's in the back. Uh, it takes a little prodding, but you can get it open. You got some cool stuff going on there. Nice design. You can't really do anything with any of this stuff, but you do have this winch. What you can do with the winch is you can drag it out like so. And then once you do that, it hooks onto the van, which I think is a cool little feature. I think it's very nice. And then you can pull the chain out, which is also very cool. And then you can roll it back up. Now, I don't know if I put this on the right way, so I shot the video twice. There could be that I put it on the wrong way twice, but it just clips onto the back, back of the bumper and uh, overall is pretty good. Now, let's get into some size roundups. Let's start first with some Batman stuff. Uh, we got the Batmo Beast here without the uh, you know frame, massive. And then we got this Bat Cycle here. Big size difference there for those wondering. And then we have the 89. Batmobile. I believe this is the 89. Yeah, this is the 89. Um, I wasn't sure if it was the Flash one. And then we have the DC Collectibles uh, animated series Batmobile. That thing's obviously longer, but not as tall. And then going on from there, we have the Jazz Ink Dioramas um, BVS Batmobile. And as you can see, the Troll Van's got a good size, but the Thunder Tank, this is where it gets crazy. Thunder tank still super huge, not as tall, but still big piece. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Which van is better? I'm not here to tell you which van is better. I'm here to tell you what I feel about each van. I thought I was gonna love the tune van a lot more. I ended up being quite a bit disappointed with its compact size and whatnot. The Super 7 van, I loved it. I still love it. I think it's cool. I like the Super 7 van more. It has more flair to it. Uh, I just think it's a cooler piece. And you told me that two years ago plus, you know, when these things went up for pre-order in their respective schedules, I wouldn't have believed you. I mean, it's crazy how that works out. I mean, at the price tag that they're asking, maybe I should love this van more. I don't know. I'm not here to debate that with anyone. I get it, um, but yeah, I ended up liking the Super 7 one more. It's a lot more fun to mess with. The NECA one, I feel like I'm gonna break, and that scares me. Uh, they're both good vans, don't get me wrong. I just like the Super 7 one more. Overall, this thing's been a lot of fun to mess around with. It's taken up a lot of time. Um, if you can afford it, or if you're waiting for clearance, by all means, pick it up. But don't go breaking your bank account or draining your wallet or doing what you can to get it. I mean, it's cool. I don't know if it's worth the hefty price tag. I paid it, obviously, but I've enjoyed it. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, let me know what you think of this piece of machinery.